Coming up on today's show, concern about Tesla's timeline for Model 3 production, Toyota unveils the self-driving Lexus developed by the Toyota Research Institute in Silicon Valley, and why working at Tesla's Fremont facility could soon include perks like free Froyo. These stories and more coming next on 10. Like all our content, today's show is funded by the in-stream ads on today's video and by the kind donations of viewers like you. Follow the link at the end of today's video to make a monthly donation to our Patreon crowdfunding campaign to help keep us independent and impartial. And if you're already donating, thanks for your continued support. It's Friday, March 3rd, 2017. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, and this is TEN, the show that tries desperately to be just 10 minutes in length, but fails because there's just too much awesome news to cover each week. We start today's show with the news that Tesla appears to be working on a seemingly impossible timeline when it comes to the Model 3, a car it says will begin pre-production validation for some time in July. You see, while Tesla has been promising Model 3 production is on schedule, stock filings made to the US Securities and Exchanges Commission show that until the end of 2016, Tesla hadn't begun road testing of beta Model 3 prototypes, something that most automakers would have done months ago if they were working to such a tight production timeline. Admittedly, Tesla has now begun early beta testing. We've seen the photos and videos of Model 3s in the wild, and it's begun making beta parts and a few beta Model 3s on its Fremont production line late last month. But the filing has upset several analysts, including Goldman Sachs, which now says that Tesla is unlikely to meet its summer production goal, and as such has told investors to sell their stock. Only time will tell if that advice is smart or stupid. Watch this space. While it's not on sale in North America, Nissan's versatile ENB200 electric van is proving popular with both private and fleet owners across Europe and Japan, offering 70 to 80 miles of real-world range when laden, and coming in a variety of different styles from commercial van to seven-seat minivan. Available DC quick charging does help to alleviate the rather paltry range, but now French company Symbio is offering companies across Europe the chance to buy an ENB200 taxi, five or seven seater with an onboard hydrogen fuel cell range extender that can add more than 300 miles of range, making it ideal for use in major cities where finding a place to recharge isn't always possible. Cost isn't discussed yet, but it's worth mentioning that Symbio does have form, having offered a similar zero emission range extending solution for the Renault Kangoo ZE. Um, While I know that not everyone is a fan of hydrogen fuel cell technology, I have to say that its use as a range extender is something I can't wait to see more of. After all, you can replace an internal combustion engine with a fuel cell stack for range extending duties, and that has to be a step in the right direction, right? That said, however, this next story could make the previous one obsolete, since it looks forward to a time where electric vehicle battery packs could be charged in double-quick time completely wirelessly. That's at least the plan of the Society of Automotive Engineers, which has been busy working on a new standard for electric vehicle wireless power transfer to ensure that all electric vehicles and all charging systems talk the same language. The SAE Technical Information Reporting Question, that's TIRJ2954, not only lays out a new communication standard, but lays a path down for future wireless charging systems that integrate with autonomous vehicle technology to accurately align powerful wireless charging systems that could operate at power levels of up to 250 kilowatts. That's more powerful than Tesla's current supercharger technology and marks a future where you can park your car and it then goes off to charge itself when you're gone, a distinct possibility. It's all really exciting and far more powerful than the 3.3 kilowatt wireless charging standard we've been testing here at Transport Evolved for more than a year, a link for which you'll find in today's show notes. Back in January 2016 at CES, Japanese automaker Toyota announced the establishment of a brand new research facility in the heart of Silicon Valley. Called the Toyota Research Institute, the new facility was charged with developing Toyota's next generation of vehicles, from improving hydrogen fuel cell and battery electric vehicle technology to building new autonomous vehicle systems. And this week, just over a year from its founding, Toyota has revealed the first vehicle to be produced entirely by the new facility. And this week, just over a year from its founding, Toyota has revealed the first vehicle to be produced entirely by the new facility, a Lexus LS 600h L sedan, fitted with the second generation of Toyota's autonomous safety vehicle technology. 
The car itself, which debuted at Toyota's Prius Challenge event in Sonoma, California, is fitted with a whole suite of technology, including layered LiDAR, radar and camera sensors, as well as a drive-by-wire system. Its primary function? To help TRI work with the development of both its chauffeur, Level 5, and Guardian, Level 4, autonomous vehicle systems. But it'll be a while before we see full autonomy from Toyota. It's said multiple times that it feels a Level 4 autonomous operation is far more likely in the short term, with lots of hurdles to be overcome, legislative, sociological, and technical, before Level 5 is ready for market. A car we might see a little sooner, however, is the all-electric version of the Honda Clarity sedan, a car which is currently only available as a fuel cell sedan in select markets in California, Japan, and parts of Europe. It was hoped the all-electric Clarity, as well as a plug-in hybrid variant of the same, would help Honda bring its first serious non-compliance plug-in models to market. But this week we learn the news, via Automotive News, that Honda is only intending to give its 2018 Honda Clarity EV a range of just 80 miles per charge, putting it at the bottom of the plug-in marketplace when it comes to range. Worse still, Honda seems to think that it can sell that 80-mile Clarity EV for $35,000 before incentives, something that would have been possible a decade ago, but today will result in zero sales and Honda being laughed out of the EV sphere for good. Come on, Honda. 2011 called, and it wants its car back. Epic fail. In recent years, most automakers keen to promote their latest plug-in car often invest in local or national electric vehicle charging networks so that their customers will have somewhere to charge their cars on long-distance road trips. Indeed, so far we've seen BMW, Volkswagen and Nissan all invest heavily in national charging networks. And now it's the turn of German automaker Daimler. But rather than invest in a local network, it's chosen to lead a round of investment worth $82 million to bring US-based ChargePoint and its high-powered next-generation CCS quick charging stations to Europe. Other previous investors, including BMW iVentures, have helped ChargePoint in the past, but this new investment will mean that ChargePoint and its network will go head-to-head -head with established European charging networks like Fastneb. What makes ChargePoint different to some of its competitors, however, is that it doesn't lease space for charging station operation. Instead, it sells the charging stations direct to customers who then pay it a servicing fee every month and set their own pricing structure. ChargePoint then simply maintains the stations and charges processing fees for any charging that isn't free. And if this investment is anything to go by, that business model seems to work far better than many of the other charging networks out there. Which ties in nicely with our next story, namely that US-based Blink Network, which has been plagued with financial problems over its history, has announced its intent to switch from its current monthly billing cycle to a twice-weekly billing cycle. The reason? According to its parent company, The Car Charging Group, Blink's change of policy is to help combat fraud, but we and plenty of others in the electric vehicle sphere are more than a little suspicious, especially when requests for more information were turned down by the company. I'm not going to give a voice to the rumours at this stage, but suffice to say that existing customers aren't happy, especially when so many Blink stations are offline, or on the Blink as we like to say, and aren't reliable at all enough to trust week in, week out. Is there something else going on or is this really about preventing fraud? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. We're off to Paris next where the Renault-Nissan Alliance has announced that it will be launching a self-driving vehicle partnership with Transdev, a major European public transportation consultant. The plan, according to all three companies, is to develop advanced connected car services and mobility services, including the merging of autonomous vehicle and car sharing services, where customers will one day be able to book a shared car service and have that car drive itself to meet them, as well as autonomous delivery systems that eventually won't require a human driver. To start with, the program's beginning small, beginning field trials in the Paris Scalari region using the Renault Zoe electric car. And while the cars won't be fully autonomous at this time, they will use the always-on internet connectivity to ensure that accurate dispatch, supervision and routings for commercial parcel delivery take place. And as a side, I should also note that UK Nissan's demonstration of its autonomous LEAF went down at the end of last month well without a problem. So well done Nissan! Well done, Renault, and here's to a full autonomous car future. As we've said time and time again here at Transport Evolved, Tesla has never really needed to spend a whole lot of time on its advertising its range of electric cars to the world, relying instead on the evangelical praise of existing owners and some truly amazing fan-made videos that put some professional ad agencies to shame. 
Well, now, following the suggestion of the fifth grade daughter of one of the writers at EV News Report and Inside EVs, Tesla CEO Elon Musk has agreed to hold a competition to find the best fan-made commercial out there for Tesla. The winner? Well, I'm sure they'll receive a very special prize from Tesla, as well as seeing their commercial aired on TV. I can't wait to see what videos are produced and who wins. How about you? Think of open-topped British sport cars, and the chances are you'll think of Caterham, a car company which hasn't changed much over the years and is still churning out the iconic two-seat sports car based on the equally iconic Lotus 7 that's known for hill climbing abilities and direct driving characteristics. And while Caterham has spent the majority of its 44-year life churning out handmade sports cars based on the 7, powered by torquey internal combustion engines, CEO Graham McDonald told Autocar this week that Caterham, which is going through something of a golden period right now thanks to a year-long customer waitlist, is looking into building an electric version of the iconic hill climber. What's more, Caterham could even go the whole hog, going autonomous, although that's less enticing if I'm honest, since the whole point of a Caterham is to feel completely at one with the car and zip along a country lane or up a hill with your bottom just inches from the tarmac. It's beautiful feedback letting you do all the things that just aren't possible in a fully digital car with no soul. But the electric bit? I'm not going to lie. Caterham, if you need a tester, call me. And Finally, well, we haven't been covering it on this show, Tesla CEO Elon Musk has been embroiled in an ongoing battle with the United Auto Workers Union, which has been trying to encourage workers at the Tesla Fremont facility to join them. The union has been alleging that Tesla has been asking its employees to do way too much, pushing them to work long hours and overtime beyond their limits and resulting in many hours of sick time. Tesla and Musk have been disputing that claim and maintain that the unionization of the Tesla workforce isn't likely to happen. Instead, in an email to employees at the end of last week, Musk noted that overtime at the facility has actually decreased in the last year and promised that when Tesla reaches volume Model 3 production, he's got some plans to add some extra fun perks for Fremont Tesla employees, including an electric pod car roller coaster with optional loop the loop, of course, to facilitate fast and fun travel throughout the Fremont campus, as well as Froyo stands. Yes, Froyo. I'm not sure what to make of this, but hey, Froyo. Who doesn't like Froyo? And on that note, we're done for the week. There's some other stuff we haven't managed to cover in today's show, but we have put a massive number of videos this week onto our YouTube channel, covering most of those stories. So stick around and watch them when we're finished with this one. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Visit transportevolve.com for more cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transportation news. Or join in the ongoing conversation on Twitter by tweeting us at Transport Evolved. And if you liked what you saw today and want us to help make more shows like this, please consider making a donation to our Patreon crowdfunding campaign, a link for which is in the description and at the end of today's show. Thanks again for joining me. I'll see you next week. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. That was 10. Have a fantastic weekend. And until next time, keep evolving. Keep evolving.